Yes. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we are doing the eighth joint on the uh, the, the uh, window. Here we are, <laughs> the joinery window. <laughs> Gotta love lives, you never know what's gonna happen. This is a fun project with uh, six boards, nine different joints. It's a great way to test out your skill, try different things, and just understand how joints come together. And it is a, a great beginner's test just to see where are you at and what can you improve to make it a little bit better. Uh, so tonight we're actually gonna be doing the middle one, and this is a mid half lap. Um, it goes by a bunch of different terms. Um, whenever a board continues all the way through another one, it's either referred to as intersecting or mid um, or a couple different things. But you can see how the board continues through on this side, and then we flip it over and it continues on this side. Uh, so this is the one from last time. Tonight we're doing it in what else but white oak because we are the knights of the white oak. So, yes. Um, after this one, we're going to have one more joint. Um, so hopefully next week, well, not next week, the week after next, we will do the end um, and hopefully have enough time to actually put the whole thing together. So this should be a lot of fun. But uh, who knows? Life is uh, interesting. <laughs> I like it, I like it. Um, updates. Uh, next week is the MWTCA National Meet in Madison. So we are going to have a lot of fun. I've got my hotel booked. Um, and uh, we are actually going to be doing a meetup. Um, and so we're going to be meeting in the lobby of the hotel. And it's a huge, huge, huge space. Um, and so they have it set aside so we can, we can hang out in there. It's basically an open air space. It's kind of cool. Um, so we're going to be doing that on Friday at 5 o'clock. Um, at the, the hotel that the, that the meet is at. So if you want to come and hang out for a while. Um, but I will be there on Thursday. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Thursday is the tailgate. And that's usually where you get the best deals. Um, slightly lesser quality, more rusted things, need a little bit more work. Um, but great deals on good equipment that just needs to be cleaned up and, and gotten going again. And basically, that's a whole bunch of people in the, in the um, parking lot from sun up until around noon or one and everyone just open up, opens up the back of their truck or minivan and sells tools out of it. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's the one I'm really looking forward to. Then Friday morning, they have the big sale inside, which is even more tools. They tend to be a little more collector, um, a little bit higher quality tools. Um, but if you're looking for something very specific, that's the one you want to go to. And then it will also continue through onto Saturday. And then all throughout that, there are different talks and d demonstrations and historical um, items like that. Um, and it's a, just an amazing chance to learn about tools and their history and, and talk with people who've done all the research and literally the people who've written the books on the antique tools. Um, so it's, it's the largest tool sale, the largest tool meet in the world. Um, so it is very, very cool. And if you're coming, I'm looking forward to, uh, to hanging out and saying hi. Um, it's kind of fun to actually be out in the world again. <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, yeah, we got that. Uh, there isn't too much going on in the shop other than working on a bunch of projects. And I've also been working on uh, the chairs. Um, so those of you who don't know, I got a, oops, those are out of focus, bring it back in. Um, these are the, uh, um, the chair kits from Matt Cremona. Uh, so I have 10 of them and I have to go through them all and clean them all up and add chamfers to them and get them all going. So each chair is about an hour's worth of work to do the basic, about another hour's worth of work of scraping each. So um, oh, and then probably another, what, 20, 30 minutes each one. So I probably have somewhere around... 25 to 30 hours worth of work to get all these chairs done. Um, actually, probably a little more than that. But yes, I will be doing a video on that. And they are chair kits, so they're they're really nice when you're when you're first getting started. You can actually use it to understand how everything goes together. Um, the reason I'm getting this is making one chair is okay, but I need to make 10 chairs to go around the table, and making 10 chairs is not okay. <laughs> Chairs are not my favorite thing. I just, uh, I've never really gotten into chair making. So um, let's make the, the half lap. Um, now this is um, kind of an interesting joint um, because you're basically creating the exact same piece twice. Um, very rarely do you create the same joint on both sides that goes together. And so this is two pieces that sit over top of each other and half lap them. Now, the important thing about this one is the spacing. I need to space this board at the correct spot on here, 
and I need to space it on this one at the correct spot this way. Um, so what we need to do is I need to mark on this board exactly where this board intersects. And the most important thing on that is this stop here needs to butt flat into that. And then on this one, I need it to be the right spot this way so that the board goes up and down this way. And so I can put this on here and I can mark on there. But we need to make both marks on both pieces. So we're going to start by moving this over and I'm going to butt this into here. And with that, just gonna barely tip it in. Come on. Just touching, very, very carefully making sure that, that makes contact right there. Bring this in here and make a little nick mark here, resting the flat of the knife on the bottom one to reference that, and then nick the top. So now I have nicks on this one where I need to cut out this way. Now I need to make nicks on this board where I need to cut out this way. And so for that one, I'm going to turn it this way. And with this, I can bring this over here. I'm going to flush up this end. And theoretically, the other end should be flush, but I actually got to pull these together because this isn't clamped. Um, so let me grab a clamp here. Um, because these aren't final, I want to make sure that these just get squeezed together so I get an accurate marking on here. Yep. And of course, this is the one I made. It's probably the slowest one of my clamps because it has regular threads as opposed to uh, acne threads. So you gotta crank it, and you gotta crank it. And then someday, it'll get there to that point. We'll get there when we get there! I think I said it to my kids enough. <laughs> so we're gonna clamp this down, and now we should be able to flush these up, and now they touch exactly on both sides. That's what I wanna feel right there. Both edges of this, on um, both edges back here are right on where I want it to be. So I'm gonna put this down on here, and we're gonna do the exact same thing we did before, except we're gonna mark on the bottom board rather than the top board. And I just slid it. I should be able to put it into that mark. Wiggle that over. Oop. Don't wiggle it. Actually, I'm gonna do it on the back side here. Uh, one of the things I'm just thinking about is I've got this, oh, pinched in there. So I've got this slide back here and I'm measuring this way. So it's easy to actually turn this. So I want to mark as close to this shaft as I can. Just one of those little things to increase accuracy a little bit. So I'm going to flush those up again. And I'm going to make a little mark here, putting enough pressure on it again so it doesn't slide off. And a little mark here. So now I've got a mark on this middle board. And I've got a mark on this middle board. Just make sure those are strong enough that I can actually see them. One, two. And where are your marks? I did put marks on it, right? Yep, there they are. One, two. Put them on this side. So I'm just going to deepen those marks a little bit. There we go. So that's all we need is we need the two marks on this for where this board intersects. And we need the two marks on this one for where this intersects. So let's flip this over. Actually, I'm going to take this screw out. Except I don't have a flat blade here, do I? I always knew you had a screw loose. I usually have a screw <laughs> loose. Let me grab something from over here. Pull out this pocket hole screw. Otherwise, it's going to start digging into things and causing issues. And I don't so like issues. So then would you be screwed? <laughs> she said it, not me. <sighs> the reason I love her. Oh, I, I've been looking all day. <laughs> We're going to take this apart. Nice tight joints. That's the one I want. So let's come back here. I've got my mark and I've got my mark here. So now we want to transfer those across. And as before, the side with the tape is our reference side. So we want to make sure everything's off of that. And whichever side of this, it really doesn't matter as long as I use the same side every time. So I'm put this on here and put my knife into that mark. Slide this over against that. Light. 
medium, hard. Same thing over here. Put the knife into the mark, slide it up. Light, medium, hard. And then I'm going to lift it up under this. I want to make sure that my fence is on the side with the tape. So we're going to put it on the side here. And we're going to mark down the side on all four of these. Any questions yet? Uh, not necessarily related to the project. Oh, then we can open it up. All right. This is going to take me a minute to get through. Dennis Miko asked, have you been to a tool meet in Ohio and which one had the best prices? Um, the tool meets are all about the same on prices when it comes to the MWTCA. Um, you usually have the same members that will drive all over the place. Um, and there's, there's a few of them that will be on the West Coast and the East Coast and selling the same things there. Um, so it really doesn't matter. Price-wise, it's going to be the same. Different ones will have different sizes, so you'll have more tools at one or the other. Um, but in Ohio, they're all about the same. But which one have you been to? Um, I can't remember the names of the town. There was one in, was it West Bend? No, it's Indiana. Um, I was going to say, have you been to Ohio for a tool meet? I was in one in, um, oh, come on, not Tallahassee, it's a T, northwest corner, Toledo. Toledo. That was a while ago, though, like four years ago. All right, so we're going to do the same thing on this one. So, yeah, whenever you're going to the local meets, they don't, uh, there is not as much of a problem. So on this one, though, I want to be careful because my tape is on this side. So this is my reference side. So I want to make sure that I reference off of the, the same side here, but when I go down the sides, I want to make sure my fence is on the other side. So light, medium, hard. Is that a super chat I saw? It is, and it's because SJ LaRue wants a joke for me. That's why most people come here, for her, not me. Pretty much. So All what right. we got? If your dentist fixed your cavities with different colors, would it be okay, or would you have mixed fillings? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was at the dentist today. I had to do that one. <laughs> oh, I did it wrong. I put my fence. Oh, you didn't put on your I reference? I didn't put on the reference side. <gasps> These short lines are so short that it's really not going to make much of a difference, but it's just always good to be in the habit. It'll make more of a difference here in a minute when we cut the depth line. So thanks for the super chat. Yes. I always like hearing the jokes my wife finds. Mm -hmm. So now we need to cut. We've made our walls where we're going to cut down. Now we need to make the depth of how far down do we cut. And so for that, we're going to set up a marking gauge. And I'm going to set it to, because it's 3 quarters, so we're going to set it to 3 eighths. Um, so something around that. I really don't care that it be exact on. I'm going to always reference off the tape side. And so that, so all that matters is it's the same depth on both of them. So I'm not even going to check this to make sure it's the same depth. I'm just going to cut this mark there. And rotate it around, making sure my fence is on the tape side. Because this doesn't even have to be in the middle. It can be anywhere. As long as you're always referencing the same side on both boards, you will have the same result. I'll take this off. I don't need that on there now. I'll do the same thing on this side. And that will be about that for the layout. One more. So we're going to cut these out in two different ways. And that's one of the fun things about this is it's the exact same thing both ways, but we're going to show two different ways of doing it. Um, and first up, we're going to need the carcass saw. Uh, carcass saw is a cross-cut back saw. And it is great for joinery. It's probably the saw that I use more than anything else in my shop. I'm going to set these in the vise. So it's just pinching the bottom bit. I could put it in a bench hook, but I find working in the vise is just a little bit more controllable. And that is what I generally prefer. Focus. Vices so. or control? No. What? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Pinching the back of the board, which we showed last week, or tried to. Yeah. And we're going to start on the far side, work our way back. I'm just going to go right into that line. My goal is not to have to chisel out those sides at all.
I'm going to cut down to that depth line. A little bit more on the other side. How was I on my line? Right on the line. Right there. That's where I like to be. There we go. We hit the depth on both sides. Do the same thing here. But on this side, we're going to use the other side of the saw. So the set on the teeth, just nick that line. Because that, that knife cut is the first cut of the saw. And this one I'm going to come back and chisel out. There we go. Down to depth on both of those. This one I was a hair off the line, so I'm going to have to come back and chisel that one out. I think the other one I'm okay on. But we're going to wait until the end and fit them together. If you aren't confident with your knife, with your saw, then back it off. Stay away from the line because you can always clean it up with a chisel. But do understand, most of the time when people have problems with joinery, the problem is not from the saw, the problem is from the chisel. Especially with dovetails, people stay away from the lines and they chisel back to the line, you always end up taking a little bit more and that creates gaps. So most of the time the problem is the chisel work, not the saw. So that's why I like to get good at sawing right on the line, right where I need it to be. And more important than anything else is make sure you chew your tongue when sawing. Your accuracy will increase exponentially. No, the correct method is to suck your lips in, which is apparently what I do in every video. <laughs> My videographer's always like, wow, I can't believe you even have a tongue left. <laughs> so now... Would that make you speechless? No. Ain't nothing gonna stop this tongue. <laughs> Joinery mallet, and I'm gonna grab a one-inch chisel. So on this one, actually, I'm gonna get this camera in a little closer. <coughs> Excuse me. Had a piece of popcorn just before getting in. I got a shell that's stuck in my mouth. <laughs> Oh, and for those of you who want to know, if, if, if you do suddenly hear a thunder of elephants with a background of giggling, um, my daughter actually has a sleepover going on because her birthday is next week. Um, so she's got a, a sleepover with friends and, oh my word. I'm I glad forgot I only when have one I girl. planned it, it was a live I'm night. glad I only have one girl. <laughs> Here, where are we at? Right there. There we go. That's what I want. So what we're going to do is we're going to chisel this down. Now my line, my bottom line is right there. I don't want to go right into the line. I'm actually going to come up about halfway and I'm not going to aim straight across. I'm actually going to aim up. I want it to blow up the top. It's going to go across like that. Do the same thing here about halfway down. Aim up. And then I'm going to come about halfway down again. Still aiming up. And the way I'll do it is I'll let the chisel rest on the back here. That gives me a really nice angle, as well as makes it easy to control. And I don't want it to hit the back side. I want to come out before we get to the back side of the board. And again, I'm going to come up halfway again. So we've got what, only a less than a sixteenth of an inch. Is that another super chat? We have two super chats. Woohoo! What do we got? Um, Alan says, short viewing tonight. Sorry, Bible study always wins. Love these build projects. Apparently, we had a request for a birthday joke, Sarah. I know, poor man wants a birthday joke, but James is busy. And then Pablo also super chatted. So, we have three jokes that are due. Three jokes? Three jokes. Because we have poor man's birthday request. Oh, for okay. a joke. Yeah. Well, what do we got? Okay. So I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did on the other side. We're going to flip the board around and do it from the other side. So right so, now... First of all, thank you for the super chats. Here, just a second. I want to show this. No. Um, so right now we've got this halfway across as a, as a ledge. Do the same thing from this side. and Basically have it come to a point here in the middle. So I'm going to do that while Sarah does her jokes. What do we got? Hang on. I was waiting for someone to come downstairs. All right. Yes. <laughs> so what's the best thing about living in Switzerland? Skiing. 
the flag is a big plus. <laughs> I like it. All right, you ready? Yes. I've started investing in stocks, beef, chicken, and vegetable. One day, I hope to be a bullionaire. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then, what do you call an exploding monkey? What? A baboom. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason I married her. No idea what it is, but there's a reason I married her. <laughs> hey, you asked me. <laughs> Just remember that. I you did. asked me. <laughs> I was under the influence at the time. <laughs> so, I hope you all like those. <laughs> And Alan, did you see my post in Hive Mind? Told you what I want for Christmas. <laughs> yes, the new. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have a bit of a rise here in the middle. And I have what I can do is I can come into this and with a bit of a stabbing motion or just wiggling it back and forth, I'm just going to pair this off. And I'm going to get rid of that mountain. I'm not going to blow out the other side. I'm just doing from halfway from this side. Just visually taking the top off that mountain. And now, visually, this area is about flat. Now that that's where it is, I'm going to go right into that line. And I'm going to tap across. Now we're going to do it one way here. And a little while later, I'm going to bring in the router and show a different way of doing it on the other side. And I'm still aiming up just a hair. Because you can always take off more, but you can't add it back. Now I'm going to come in, clean this off a little more. So that's about where I think it should be. I'm going to turn around, do the same thing on the other side. And on this one, let's do the stabbing here. Back up and show you that this once you, this stabbing method is something that. I love. So hold it like a golf club, thumbs pointing forward, and just wiggle it. Oop. Just make sure there's nothing on this side. And it's amazing how much control you can actually get. Just doing it light, easy stabbing. It's great for cleaning off a surface. Oop. Now we're going to go right into that line. Lining up just a hair. And then what we're going to do is to check if this is level, we're just going to use a chisel. You don't need a router. You can actually get a pretty clean surface with just the chisel. And do that same stabbing motion here. And it's riding back here. And so here I'm not hitting anything because it's sliding flat on this. Until I get over here, now I'm hitting things. So what I can do is I can set the chisel on this side, and I can lower it down. And I want it to touch the whole thing, but I can see I have a little bit of high spot there. Still a little bit of a high spot there. And still a little bit of a high spot there. So the high spot is all on the other side of this. Oop. Ah. Come back in. So we're going to turn it around, because the high spot now is... This side here, we're going to do the same stabbing motion. Just take off a little bit of material. Now you could make a poor man's router. Paul Sellers has a couple great videos on that. Personally, I like doing this. There's something about just freehanding it. It feels really, really good. And it doesn't have to be perfect. See, I still have a little bit of high spot in the middle there. That one's good. A little bit of high spot over there. A little bit of high spot here. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Trim off all those. Well, no wonder they're one of your key words is rolling joints because you're also getting high. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who don't know, Got looking context. at the most common search terms that brought people to the site, and it's number one is wood by right. Number two is Rex Kruger. 
Number three is Paul Sellers. Number four is rolling joint. Number five is how to roll a joint. <laughs> yeah. I've got videos on that, I'm sure. So I've got to trim this back just a little bit. If anything, it's better to undercut that shoulder. Go back over to this. Because this is the one I was a little ways away from the line. Just the tiniest bit. I'm going to come back here and clean it up. A good sharp chisel is a great thing to have. Now, we're going to test it by bringing in this board. And, oh, I get a little loose. Took off a hair on there. So I got actually a bit of a gap here. Look at that. That's not the way I want it. The other side's good. This side's nice and tight. This side's a little bit loose. Now, is that the outside? What's that? Is that the outside? Yeah, this is the back of it. There's the, uh, the tapes on the other side. So hopefully this one will be a little bit tighter. But that's the fun of live. You get to see the reality. That's still an acceptable joint. It will still be fully functional. So we're going to do much the same thing with this. Um, we're going to do the, the vast majority of removing the waste with the chisel. We're going to do that same working our way halfway down and peaking it. But then we're going to come in with this one and show how to do it with a router. Because a router is a lot of fun. Um, and if I'm just doing one or two of these, I'm just going to do it with a chisel. Um, just because it's, it's just as quick and easy like that. But a router will give you an even cleaner surface. It, it gives you a very good guarantee of a flat surface as long as you use it right. So we're going to do that. Any questions while I'm hitting this up? Uh, not related to the project. Oh, what we got? Uh, Michael Green wants to know, how will you be finishing the chairs? Uh, Rubio Monocoat. Um, Rubio Monocoat is the same finish that I used on the table, and it's one of my favorite durable finishes. It's probably the closest I've seen to a straight um, boiled, uh, boiled linseed oil and paste wax finish. And uh, I love, I love the look of it. All right, one more. Halfway down the line here. Halfway down to the line here. What other questions do you got? Uh, let's see. Brian, Brandon Chanel asked, do you know of any tool meets that are held in California? Yes, there's actually a whole tool collecting organization for California um, called PAST. It's an acronym for something, I don't remember what it is. Uh, but if you go to my website, handtoolfinder.com, I have a whole list of um, tool collecting organizations on there. And one of them is for California. They're not quite as active, um, but they are out there. Though I have to say, for the national meets, People fly from all over the world to come to these. Although not as much now because international travel is a little more difficult, but people will be coming from all over the United States. There'll be quite a few people coming from California and Florida and all over the place to Wisconsin for this next week. So, do the same thing on the other side, halfway down, halfway down. Something fun about popping off big pieces of work with a chisel Oop, don't hit it yet. There's also something about doing it live that I tend to rush a little bit because I still need to get it done in time. And so I don't get the chance to slow down and really make the joint nice. But hey, that's reality. A lot of times you can't. And I like showing the difficulties and the issues as well as all of the great times. So I'm just going to take off a little bit of that hill in the middle. And now we can bring in the router. So for the router here, um, a router is a way of making one surface parallel to a higher surface. And so in this case, I'm going to set it up so I can put it in. Let me see, how can I show this better? Let me do this. Here, give me a question while I'm doing this up. Uh, poor man said, not related to window, but do you know how, do you, how much do you know about CNCs and their programming? Um, quite a bit. Um, I actually ran a CNC mill 
for a cabinet shop for about a month. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, I did a, a decent amount in my master's work on the CNC, so it's a lot of fun. That and I do hobby 3D printers now. It's not the same thing, but it has a lot of similar aspects. So I'm going to lower this down until the iron just starts to hit stuff in the middle here. And I want it to not hit over here at the edge, because remember, this is mounted up. It's highest right here in the middle. I don't want it to hit the edge, so I'm not catching anything. I'm just catching stuff in the middle. I actually want it to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to loosen off the weight on the back here, and I'm going to roll it up just a little bit, lifting it up. So now, now I'm just hitting a little bit over here. And so now I know the router is set up that it's only hitting this tiny spot here. So I'm going to back it off, away from it so it's not hitting anything. Loosen this and give this a quarter turn. Then come back in. And I'm going to go across the whole thing at that depth. Back it up, loosen this, quarter turn, tighten that up. And now we're getting close down to depth. Back it up, loosen, quarter turn, tighten it up. The other thing I'm doing is I'm planing from here over to the middle. I'm not going past because I don't want to blow out chips over there. Now I can turn around and come at it from the other side. So then we can back it off, quarter turn, and we're going to do this five or six more times. So you can see how this is a little bit slower than the chisel work, but if I were to do this multiple times, this would be very repeatable, and I could guarantee a repeatable depth every time. But this is also a lot of fun. Just to see my line and where I'm at. Yep, we're still good. Back it off, quarter turn, tighten it up, go at it again. How's that looking on the camera? Is that actually coming across? Uh, I think so. My hand, my fat hand in the way. I mean, you kind of get the gist of it. I would do an overhead, but then my head would be in the way. Now we're close. Probably about one more turn. So I'm going to do a little bit less than a quarter turn. And now we're just taking off a wisp. Do it from the other side. The other thing you'll see I'm doing is I'm always keeping one handle handle gro grounded on here and rotating on that. And what that will do is it always gives me a good solid reference surface. So I'm hanging off over here. Nothing is supporting the other side. The other side can tip off. So I need to keep enough pressure down on this one so that I can rotate in. So now, we just have a wisp left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this up, and I'm going to give it another little bit of a turn, and that puts the iron right into that marking gauge line. And so this should be the last pass. Usually on the last pass, I'm going to do a little bit lighter pass, but on this one, I just want to get it done. And it really doesn't matter that this be perfect on the bottom. There's a little bit of difference, oh well. Now the moment of truth was I loose this way too. Nah, that one's nice and tight. That's the front facing one. There's what I'm looking for. 
That's, and I'll take this off. Oop. You can see that's, that's where I want it to be. So we're good on that. So, any question why I flip this around? Yes. Um, Brandon Chanel asks, in what situations would you use this joint other than in window framing? Um, there aren't many. I mean, half lap is a great way to do just about any um, flat in jointing because you have a, a good glue plane. It's, it's a quick and easy one. Um, but to do it in the middle, there aren't a lot of times when you have something cross. It's a, a picture frame or if you're doing like a glass top table and you have hatching in there. Um, I've done it on, um, um, come on, <sighs> mission style or arts and crafts. You have a lot of hash work, and so you have verticals and a couple horizontals going through it, and so you have a bunch of those. Um, if you look at the, the bed that I did, I have hash work up in the, uh, the headboard, and mm. in there I did a whole lot of these um, half lap joints. So I have a little bit of wisps and things to clean up down in here. Come around this way. You can see this stuff back in here. I just didn't cut down quite far enough with the saw. So I'm going to come under this. Clean that out. I'm going to check my shoulders. Make sure that everything is the way I want it to be. I don't want to make sure that there is no junk in there, nothing that is um, sticking up that will cause a problem. I got a little bit in here to clean. Do one last check with this. Make sure it's not catching anything. And there. Now it should be about ready to put together. So let's actually try this and see how horrible this ends up being. But first I'm gonna make sure it's actually going together the right way. So I've got this one on here and then we've got the other half lap which is here. So seven. So seven goes there, that goes there, so it crosses this way. Otherwise if I put it the other way there might be some gap or something that I misread and um, it's one of the things that, theoretically, it should be the exact same no matter which way I put it together. But there's a big difference between theory and reality. And whenever possible, follow reality. Um, you, you will not be as disappointed. <laughs> so let's actually put this together and get an idea of just how tight it is. And I might need to come back and do a little bit of cleanup on it. But we're going to use this and a scrap piece here and drive this down on. Actually, I'm going to wiggle it into place first. Yeah, just like that. Noise. There. Oh, that's pleasing. Okay, so the most important thing is that this be flush across here. And that is, that's right where I want it. That's really nice. Now the back side here, got a little bit of a hairline gap there. But honestly, not too bad. I'm, I'm okay, okay, okay with it. Let me zoom in and give you guys the, the real close up on this. So you can see this gap is ah, hundreds of an inch, maybe a little bit less, something like that right there. So it's nice and tight on this side. This side's got the slight gap, but then I flip it over, and that's butter tight. I like that. Really, really nice. So, pleasing. So there is the mid half lap. Um, it's, it's not a really common joint, but there are odd instances where it pops up. I've needed to use it on the, the back hashing in the, the, the bed. Um, I've put it in the coffee table. We had a cross member in there. Um, I think what other places um, I did a, uh, a railing once that had a horizontal member going through the middle of all the verticals and so we put hashes on all those um, uh, um, some pallet structures I've made with that um, I, think what else. I used it a lot in theater um, used that a lot in theater because in theater everything's made out of one by four pine um, or if you're really expensive one by four poplar um, and you do a whole lot of cross bracing. And so you can just dead end and gusset the back, but if you want it nice and flat, you do the half lap. Um, and that's where this really comes in. So really fun little joint. So what questions we got?
Uh, Gordon's making fun of your butter tight. <laughs> making fun of my butter? Butter tight. Yes. <laughs> it's a technical term for you folks. Don't go throwing that Kinda one Kind of like slicker than snot. <laughs> slicker than snot a doorknob. Um, <laughs> That's a good old family one. <laughs> well, apparently in Bob's your uncle is not a common phrase, which I thought it really? was. Really? Yeah. Because Bob is my uncle. Oops, that's ah, on backwards. We had, we had, uh, uncle Bob, who uh, he passed away a few years ago. He was my, he was actually my great uncle. He was my father's uncle, and so we, we used that one quite a bit. We used to have a neighbor, Bob. <laughs> Anyways. You really need to oil this thing. <laughs> you really need to do a lot of things. Uh, let's see. I like waffles. All router planes I've seen are really expensive. Is there a Harbor Freight or Home <laughs> Depot version? Yeah, router planes. Um, yeah. You know, honestly, if money-wise, the best bang for the buck is the Veritas. Um, yeah, it's going to cost you a bit, but it is, it's a new plane. It will treat you well, and money-wise, it's, it's the best bang for the buck. Um, no, there is not a, a Okay, I have to say this back. There are a few on Amazon, and there's one, if you go to my website, I have a listing of tools that I recommend, and on there I try and get the most um, cost-effective tools, and there's one on there that I've gotten to play with. It's a little bit janky, but it works. And if you had the time to set it up, it, it actually treats you very well. Um, rather than being an L shape, it's a, a, a diagonal, um, which is a slightly different way of doing it. Um, but if you're really up for money, the cheapest way to do it is make your own, and they are very easy to make. Um, I've made, what, eight, nine of them in the last six years, um, and I've got probably five or six videos on them um, because they're really easy to make, and you can make them out of all sorts of things. You can make them out of old chisel. You can make them out of Allen wrench. You can actually, what I generally suggest is just go to Veritas and buy one of the, the, the blades, pick it up, stick it in there, and you're, you're good to go. Um, there's just so many different ways of doing it that it's, um, making it's really easy. And no, you don't need a router to make a router. Uh-oh. Did you do it backwards? I did something off. Or did I? Yeah, I did something off. Well, this window is not going to look very great. So here, let me show you. Um, oops, back off. Focus. So it's off over here. So this board is that way a little ways. It's touching here, and it's way off over here. So apparently somehow I moved that board over that way, and I do not know what I did wrong. Will it be different when you screw the pop the whole time? No, because once I put this one on here, this joint, oh, yeah, I'll have that gap right there. So this whole board moved that way. So what I think I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to clean up that shoulder so that this board can shift back. So I'll have a really, really big gap on the back there. That's going to look pretty, isn't it? So, yeah. That's the way life works, though. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't, and sometimes you got gaps. So, oh well. You saw it here for your first, first folks. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that's one of the fun things about woodworking is you... People really get frustrated when they don't meet perfection. And you will never meet perfection. I don't care how good you are. You can be the best woodworker in the world, and you will still have all sorts of problems with your projects. You will still have things that don't meet up exactly the way you want them. Um, and you can remake things and remake things and remake things, but you'll still see problems because perfection is not something you can get to. Perfection is a direction, not a location. Um, so when you run into problems, Oh well, it's a chance to learn. I'm actually gonna I wanna go back into this and see so where Alex I went wrong. Wants to know the pocket hole is supposed to be on the face side? Yes. Yep. It is. Yeah, and the last one I put it on the back, um, but on this one I decided to put it on the, the face side. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the video and see where I went wrong. Cause oh, oh I know what I did. I know what I did. Okay. So when I marked this cross member, I put the clamp on it to hold it together, and I marked it. When I marked this cross member, this piece slid out, and I put it on there and marked it. 
So yeah, there's my problem. It's little things like that pop up in. So the way I'm going to fix it is I'm going to make this slot a little bit longer, have it stick out this way a little bit more so that this piece can then slide back down to where it should be. So that means I'm going to have a gap running on the underside here, about an eighth inch. Um, and it's on the back, so you won't see it. So, wow. <laughs> and that's one of the fun things about this project, is it doesn't matter. This does not have a use. It is just to practice, to learn, to try new things. And, uh, you know, if I were, if I were making for this for a project, that eighth inch gap would probably annoy me to the point where I'd go and cut another one, in which case, in this case, it's one more piece. But such is life. So that's why you learn and try new things. And then do it again in the future. And hopefully you learn that time. And then you do it again in the future. And then, then you just realize you're a moron and you <laughs> keep on going. <laughs> so what questions we got? Keeping that mouse <laughs> 12 minutes left, so if you guys have questions, throw them in the chat. We'll get to as many as we can. And we've got three so far. Let's see. Adrian Bill, I have a three and a half inch laminated bench top. How high should the, I'm assuming it's supposed to be cheeks of the leg tenons going into the top be? Um, have the tenon go all the way through the top. Um, because what happens is that tenon going through the top is what is going to give you your lateral strength. So the bench top is going to want to move back and forth while you're sawing. And so that leg is going to want to move. And so if you only have it going halfway into the leg, you only have half the leverage. If you have it go all the way through the top and actually stick out the top, then you're using the full leverage of that tenon. That's more gluing space. That's a stronger joint. You're going to have a, a much, much stiffer table. Um, and the stiffer you can make your bench, the easier it is to work on. So have it come all the way through the top. And if you look at um, these, um, I've got the tenons on these actually coming all the way up through. Um, so you can see here the tenon and the leg coming up through. And then the same thing over here. Whoop. Um, you can see the tenons over here. Focus. Actually, we probably can't. Yeah. Let's see if I can do this. There you go. See, there's the tenons coming up through. And they're just cut off flush and smooth. And that gives me the full joint um, strength. So. Yeah, um, make them the full thickness. And uh, if you want to, um, I have my original bench. It was a, a Douglas fir pine bench, um, and it is made out of two by fours, so three and a half inch thick. And those go all the way up through it. So you can see that one. Um, I gave that bench to my mom, and uh, she's a smart woman and isn't making her own. <laughs> So what do we got? Let's see. Um, Trusty Rusty asked, my shooting, my shooting board works wonderfully on pine, but I just tried it for my first time on oak and it's failing miserably. Do you think my plane is just not sharp enough? Um, yeah, that's usually the problem. Um, oak, you need a really, really sharp blade to, to power through it. Otherwise, you're just going to stop and stop and stop. Um, the other thing is that you're taking too heavy of a cut. Um, so lighten up your cut, take a little bit lighter. Um, but it could also be that the, the plane has too much friction on the board. There's a bunch of things that it could be, but most of the time it's just sharpness. Um, yeah. And a, a shooting board, especially if you're using a high angle plane, like a regular uh, Stanley bench plane, um, you need, that thing's got to be crazy sharp. If it's not sharp, it's just going to jam up. Um, and you'll even notice that with pine, with a sharper blade, you'll get a cleaner cut because you're probably getting a bunch of crushing in the, the pine um, with an iron that's not quite as sharp as you want it to be. Um, so usually sharpness is the reason. Um, though it, it could be other things, it's probably sharpness. What's next? Let's see. Johan Mesquita asked, would you fill in the gap with a sliver of wood? And if so, how? Um, no, I will not. Um, I. I do not like filling gaps. Um, just a personal preference. When I build a piece of furniture that has a gap, I want to show the gap. Um, I, as a reminder to me that I can do better, as a reminder to me that I am human. Um, and it's just one of those things that I like seeing gaps in furniture. Um, I like seeing the, the human element there. Um, so I don't fill them. Um, but that's just my, my personal ethos and philosophy. Um, if I wanted to, 
Um, I could try and fill it, but the problem is it would be an end grain fill, so the, the end of the board comes up, and I'd have to put a piece up here, so I'd have to cut a cross grain piece to fit in there. If I put like a wedge in there, a cross grain, then it would be blatantly obvious. Um, and structurally wise, most of the time, that's really not going to matter. Um, it would be, it's almost impossible to hide an eighth inch fit and actually get the grain to match up, especially with oak because the grain is so specific and so wild. Um, yeah, it, it would look like you tried to fill a gap. And I'd rather have the gap there than make it look like I tried to hide it. But again, that's very personal. And so if you want to, great. If you don't, then great. Let's see. Nolan Stevenson asks, when is Sarah's Bench Series going to be done? <laughs> um, hopefully, million dollar um, question. a week from Saturday is when I want to get it out. The final video? Yes. We only have like an hour and a half, two hours worth of work left on it. Um, and so I'd love to get it done then. It um, would be nice to be done. <laughs> but yeah, it means um, this next week we've got to do something on Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, we also have to get rid of the bench. Not the bench, the chair stuff. The chair stuff that's yeah. on my bench. Yeah. Um, no, it would be because it's been almost a year. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to chalk it up to 2020. So, yeah, I already told Luke to start editing the footage that we have for the last video on it. Um, so, so you're going to do a last video and then you're going to do a compilation? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll have one more video, the last step, and then later on we'll do a compilation video of the whole thing in one video. Uh, so stay tuned. <laughs> more fun to come. We should celebrate with some fake bubbly if we survive. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Harold Golden asked, trying to get a date for a keystone pacemaker saw. Dystonian Institute didn't help. Um, any other sites I could try? A date on it? That's a um, yeah, dating, yeah. Um, what I would actually say, there are two groups on Facebook to go and talk to. Uh, one of them is called the Unplugged Woodworker. Um, it's a group on Facebook. And the other one is the, I want to say Saw Sharpening and Restoring Group. I think that's the name of it. If you if you type in saw sharpening group on Facebook, it'll it'll come up. Um, but the collectors, that's that's where they'll hang out, and uh, you, you'll put up a few pictures in there, and you'll have someone who, who's very knowledgeable about it. Um, but individual, I don't know. Um, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> Normally, if I want something like that, I, I go and ask a, a friend who's a particular collector of that one, who'll be like, oh yeah, this is that, and this is that. And it's a great way to learn. Um, so yeah, hop on the groups and post some pictures up there and they'll, they'll answer it. So Andrew Seymour wrote, James, can you carve a sculpture in a future vid? Think that would be cool. Um, yeah, I actually want to do some more of that. I have a couple old videos that I, that I went through a, a sculpture carving phase. Um, there's one on our, our bookcase that I, that I really like. Um, and yeah, I'll do it again sometime. Um, it, it's not something that really draws me in, and so usually it's it, a project has to intrigue me to, to pull me into it, but uh, maybe again. Right. Generally, I prefer um, relief carving or, or surface carving because then I can put that into something that I'm making, whereas sculpture carving is kind of its own thing, unless you're talking about like table legs or something of that nature. What's next? Let's see. Um... Johan asks, with Sarah's bench, when you use it in demos, will the low height be a problem, or are you going to make a taller undercarriage for yourself? I'm probably going to make a few blocks that I can set it up on, um, that I can either that will extend through the leg and I can put pins in to make leg extensions, or just blocks that it will set on. Because um, really all I need it up about three inches higher. Um, but we'll see. Who knows? Haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> Although um, MWTCA was talking about having me do a talk at the fall meet. So we'll see if we go to that one. Let's see. Benjamin Coop asks, tandem build with you and Sarah coming up soon then? Um, probably. She has a few projects she wants to do. So. I do. <laughs> My glasses need me to finish a project. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, 
Let's see. Hold your words. <laughs> I'm sorry. That just sounded like hold your horse. Um, I saw James push a board down onto the bench with his forehead to hold between bench dogs for planing. Is that a thing or is it your thing? Yeah, well, the, the problem with that particular board is it had, it was a half inch thick. Um, do I have one here? No, I don't have one of those left. Um, so it was a four foot long piece of white oak, half inch thick by three inches wide. Um, but it had a slight curvature in it, um, flat wise, which wasn't a problem. I'm actually, I was going to laminate bend it. If you, so if you want to see that, uh, it was last Saturday's uh, video. And um, I needed to plane the surface, but I needed to plane the concave surface. And I wanted to pinch it between dogs. Well, I can't hold down a four foot piece on one end and hold down the other end and crank it down. So if I hold down one end with one hand, then I can use my head to hold down the other end, and then I can crank the dog into place and hold it down. Um, and then it, the, the dogs would hold it um, on the bench so I could plane it smooth. Um, so yeah, that's why I put my head on there. <laughs> it's, it's my third hand. So I need one hand for this end, one hand for that end, and then the other hand to drive the screw. And the third hand's my head. How much we got? Uh, two minutes left. How many more we got? Uh, let's see. Alex wants to know, what about a negative height stool? <laughs> Um, I think we're coming up. Is that all of them? Cool. Yeah, that's all well, um, next week is our monthly Q&A, and then we're going to be finishing this one up. Um, and then I think we have one more. And then the first one in July, we're actually going to be doing a, uh, an interview with Rob Cosman. That should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, lots of fun things coming up. If you do have any questions that I didn't get to, feel free to contact me. I answer as many as I can. And uh, I think I'll do it for now. So until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. And now I wait for her to click the button. <laughs>